Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about fetch. Ta -da! Fetch is something that is built into all web browsers nowadays if you are using modern ones. So IE11 might not have it, but all the other browsers that we use today have fetch. So if we're going to talk about fetch, here we have some examples that I will show you. And for instance, we have the regular fetch where you just get some data. If you press that button, it goes out and fetches some data. This is a message. And you can see here in your dev console all the things that are sent and all the things that is responding from that message. Next up, we can do a post. So this will send some data. This is some test variable. If we look at the preview here of this, um, down here we see that we send a payload of test. This is a test variable. And then we get the response back here. And then we can uh, select a file here. Doesn't really matter what. Let's just take that file because it's small and then do an upload. So let's see here. Now, on the upload here we see that we did an upload with this XMP file and if we look at the headers here we see that we have my file which is binary and this is a form data with some multi-part form data. So this is what we are going to look further into. If we go over to the code here I have a little bit of an express server in the back end. I'm not going to talk too much about that, but if you want to set up this specific example, you can take a look in the description and get download this example. Uh, and what, what's installed here is the express node server, uh, body parser to parse the bottom of the message, express file upload, which will take the file that you upload and you are able to copy that to some place on disk and the course engine because you don't want to <laughs> be restricted by the cross origin um, policies. So if we add these different tools into our app, which is an express app, uh, and we also set some limits for the uploads and use temp files and so on. Uh, it's not that important. We have a public area where we can fetch all the XML, uh, all the HTML and JavaScript. And then we have this message here we, when we get and on post we will return the variable in the body and then the message and upload is just if there is files then get that file with my file name um, and then just move it over to a place and if that's not something we can do then return with 500 and an error or else we will return with the file name that we moved and then we'll start the server. So nothing special here. If we go over to our index.html here, you can see that I have some styling, not that important, but it's just so these buttons look nice. And then we have three different buttons and we have an upload field. Uh, and the result where we put where, whatever gets back. And then I will uh, fetch all these by element by ID. So I have different variables. So I can just call them down here and I keep the same naming as I have up here. So let's look at the first function here, the fetch with get. And it's the standard command that you run when you run get, uh, fetch, you will run a get uh, method command to the server. So it will call the server and it will get some data. Before, if you did this and we didn't have fetch as an API, we would use the XML strangely called request thingy uh, that were different for all web browsers, which made it a mess. So everybody started using jQuery or other different uh, bundle tool. But as we have this in the platform now, in our vanilla JS, I think it's much more appropriate to use it here. So I will call this get um, endpoint. And then I will, from this fetch here, I will get a promise. And a promise is pretty much you calling to Ether, hello, I want 
some message from you and it says, I'll promise you to get back to you about that. And it's not really the call that is promised, it's JavaScript engine that promise you a return value back. And you say, then when I get that response value, I will uh, use the then clause here. So if I get something back, it will be in here as a response. And if this fails, or if any of these fails, I will catch the error down here. And that's also a kind of promise, because the promise will either return you a value or an error. So we can handle all the errors of this sequence of calls here down, down at the bottom. So here we get the response back. And I want the JSON part of that. So I want to parse the JSON part. And if let's say we get a two megabyte document back as a JSON, that can take some while to parse. So when we say response.json, that function actually gives us a, a promise again, because it might take a while. So I will just return that promise. And then down here, we will handle that promise as well. So here we will have an actual JSON object that we have parsed and where I can just get the message part of that JSON and put that into my inner HTML of the result. So this is all that you need in order to fetch and get the value back. You can make these functions async and then type it as a little bit more iterative uh, way where you await a response and when you get the response that will be in your variable and so on. But I don't feel that that's uh, required to do a fetch. This is very easily readable as well. So now let's go over to the next one here where we want to post some data. So we click here, we set our data variable here. I will do a fetch against the endpoint post and here I need to set some things. I need to set post so we actually say that I want to post this. Then we need a mode. In this case, I use cores. There are a few different modes depending on how you want to talk to the server. If you are on a local server and it, you use the same um, URL and so on, you can change it to different modes. But look into that if you are <laughs> want to. It's more about what privileges you have to that server. I don't want to cache this call, of course. I only want to send the credentials, if I send any credentials in this call, if I'm on the same origin. So that's important. Either if you don't do that, all the unsafe, all the cookies will be sent to another server, which might not be what you want. And then we set the headers here. So content type application JSON, because that's what I will send. I will send a JSON call. And then if we have any redirects on the line, I want to follow those redirects. You can say that I don't want to follow any of these redirects, but I will follow them in this case. And then we have a referrer policy of no refer. So I will not send a value back that it came from this IP or I'm calling from this server and so on. So I don't want that information to be sent to the server. In this case, I don't really have a need to have that information. But it's good that you can actually set that on your fetch requ request. And then I will set my body and that's a string. So I will stringify my JSON and set that to the body. Then we have the same fix here where we get the response as a JSON, get the uh, promise again, set that as in HTML and on error we'll also set that error. Last but not least we'll talk about the upload and this is a little bit more involved. We have this form data at the beginning here and we set my file to that form data. So I will take the file upload element up here, this input, and I will get the files from that input because it can be multiple files. And I will get the first file and I will put that in my form data as the name my file. Then I will do this fetch. It's a post. We have course, no cache, same Oracle, follow and no refer. And then I will just set that as a body. You see here that I don't have the uh, contact, uh, the headers, what content type I have, because in this case, we will use the multi-file uh, 
uh, endpoint <laughs> header, but it also needs to tell the system what the um, separator between the different elements will be, so it will generate that for you. If you are using a form data, it will set multipart for your message and add that separator so you know which, uh, part, which part starts where. And then we have the same here uh, for return values with promises and so on. So this was what I wanted to cover in this video. I wanted to give you a basic overview how to use fetch so you don't need to add any extra dependencies to your code in order to do simple HTML or HTTP calls back to your server to fetch data and do different uh, workloads. If you have a large framework that actually handles your data and propagates it to different uh, views, then that might be a better case to use what's built in. But if you're writing standard JavaScript and just want the functionality of fetching some data from the server, I think this is much more appropriate to use than adding a library to your server or to your web page. I hope that you found this video interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you liked this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. Do you like when I do these more basic functionalities videos so you can get a clear understanding on how to use these APIs? Answer that question in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.